Hey, what's up everybody? How are you doing? It's me, Robert Anthony, Rob the RV Guy, and today we're going to be installing a significant amount of solar on top of my Bigfoot 2500 series travel trailer. Let's get into it. Hey, so if you've been following me a lot, you know that I do a lot of off-gridding um, and we do custom solar installations at Rob the RV Guy. Today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding a significant amount or a large volume of solar on top of my rig. And we're going to do it by making what's called a solar float panel is what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be working you through that process of how we're gonna do all the mounting and everything that we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be using the Iron Ridge rail system these are Q bases. Uh, this is an 11 inch post and we're gonna be installing these. I'm gonna to explain to you how I'm doing it um, and, and how I disagree with those of you that are using VHB on top of your fiberglass rig and the kind of potential problems that you have. Or maybe better said, why I would never use VHB to install on top of a, of a fiberglass rig with these Iron Ridge posts. So we're gonna get into that. We're gonna detail how we're affixing these, how we're sealing them, how we're creating an aerodynamic front, which is what we're gonna be doing with this. This is gonna be our air brake on that front panel, and we're gonna show you the final product when it's all said and done. So let's get going and have some fun. All right. We're up on top of the Bigfoot now. This, of course, is the Q-Base, the post, and the side rail mount for the Iron Ridge system. So I'm gonna show you, for those of you that would have a fiberglass roof, now this would apply also to a standard wood roof, but for a fiberglass roof, this is how I'm doing it to make sure that it's going to be very, very stable. I'm gonna show you step one. Step one is we're using butyl tape. You can see all that butyl tape on the bottom here at every screw opening, it's covered with butyl tape on the underside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish sticking down all of these, and then I'm gonna show you the next step to make these secure. All right, there's the last one. We're gonna line it up with our cross. There, now we're ready to start drilling. When I'm drilling in a fiberglass roof, I'm only just penetrating the fiberglass. I'm exercising great caution to not go way down in, just like this. So the screw in this situation, in this situation specifically, is really basically a placeholder. That's what the screw is. The screw is there to squish down and put pressure on the butyl tape. And what we're doing is, is every screw is dipped and sealant as well, on top of the fact that with the Iron Ridge, you've got the rubber washer on the top. These are more for residential structures, so you have the rubber washer on the top, but we dip every screw in sealant, so you've got now sealant, butyl tape, and when we're done, of course, we go over the sealant, but the true anchoring of the system takes place not so much with the screw in this situation because we can't actually hit uh, a, you know, a stud, a wood stud or an aluminum stud, um, we're actually adhering to the fiberglass roof with the butyl tape. These are good, you know, it got a decent sized screw. I believe these are number 10s as far as the screw size goes. And then, um, or maybe a 12. Uh, and, and then we're gonna put sealant over the top, which I'm gonna show you. And you'll understand how and why this roof, I'm confident, will, once it's up, will, will not move. It will be so secure. So on to the next step. Well, good morning, we're here. We're getting ready to start doing the sealant. So I'm gonna show you how that's going to work here. We're gonna start with the Unirack. This is a Unirack finishing edge that I have engineered to work as a windbreak uh, because it has a rounded nose here. It's meant to help uh, deflect the wind. So while we're driving, we wanna have the airflow up the front of the trailer, over this, and up that panel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use my favorite sealant. This is Forever Extra Leveling Lap Sealant. Uh, this is uh, a self-leveling sealant similar to Dicor, and it has a guarantee of, like, it's 20 or 25 years. We say lifetime in the industry, but it's a technical 20 to 25 year guarantee. We're gonna use that around these, these feet 
that are in here and that's how we're going to seal these off because we need a leveling sealant here to properly seal this and so we're going to get into that right now All right, so the next thing we're moving on to here is we're gonna seal where the aluminum posts attach to the Q base with this silver Sikaflex 221. This is a non-leveling. This is what I'm gonna use to seal around where the post meets the base. That's just for extra protection. I'm doing the silver because it matches and it won't stand out and look, you know, real whitish. But I'm gonna be doing that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right here, we need to put a bead of this Sika Flex down. And while I'm doing that, Jacob, show them what you're putting on there, Jacob. This is gonna be the Extreme Concentrate from the RV Roofman, my favorite product to seal with. He'll be using a brush, show him the brush. He'll be using a brush to put this down and this will go where all of these tape perimeters are at. So we're gonna get busy on that now. Is there another brush? Starts hardening up pretty quick. Once this is on, each of the posts is now officially sealed to the top of the fiberglass. So we have um, the Cubase onto the butyl, the butyl screwed down to the fiberglass, sealant put on the screws before they penetrate, the heads of the screws have a rubber head, and then we finish it off with this extreme concentrate. What that does is that's gonna help bond the Cubase to the fiberglass roof in a permanent fashion. When you multiply that times the 14 total risers that we have, we've got a really secure mounting that I feel quite confident in. It's gonna have to take the whole roof of the fiberglass off, uh, the whole top shell, in, in my view, once this is affixed and dried uh, with regard to these panels and the mounting system that we have. This is how, uh, if I were to install on any unit, whether it's a stick and tin build, or a fiberglass unit, this is exactly how I would do it. The only variable being on a stick and tin, I would be able to get into a stud and, and, and fasten those screws to a stud. But in either event, the screws here are more than, more, more than anything just a placeholder. But once they also per, per, put pressure on that butyl, uh, it is gonna be quite secure. So you know, like I say, in any solar build that I would do on a roof, this is exactly how I would be doing it. Let me show you these finished products here. You can see here now as we get in close, I've got the Sikaflex 221 sealing the post to the base. And then this base is once this dries, is in essence cemented to this roof. So it is not going anywhere. The thing that I like about this is it is rubberized. It's not like the Hangs uh, Alkid, which dries real hard. This will have flex, which is good as this rack moves in the wind all right all right so we have the rails now the rails are set up we're going to start bringing panels up and getting them locked down and installed you can let's take a look at the rails here let's go over here there we are look at that real nice so our panels will sit this way we just gotta wire them up. Let's get to moving some panels.
This is the positive side. This side? This is the positive that's connecting to there. Okay, hold, hold, hold. A second. Okay. Okay, go ahead and just set it on the rack. Just walk back and set it on the rack. Okay. Well, it's a bright one today. So we're finished with the install and I'm gonna show you a little bit of the finished product here as well as comment on my thinking with regard to the mounting and how this rack is performing. So you can see here the finished product with regard to the Q bases and how they're finished up. Um, again, you got four screws going through into pre-drilled fiberglass on top of butyl tape, sealant put through the screws and they act as a placeholder. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this toward the end of the video um, and explain to you my logic and my theory behind this because I'm kind of pioneering this whole setup, honestly. You can see here in the front, the Unirac nose cone, uh, how that has a bit of a gap at the bottom. Um, from what I've read, I'm not an engineer or a space aerodynamics specialist, but from what I've read, having a slight gap underneath there of about um, an inch to two inches, what that does with the front panel being angled at about an 11 to 15 degree slope, what that does is it creates a good aerodynamic flow over the top of the entire rack system uh, while allowing enough air underneath, just enough air underneath to release the forward pressure that would be pressing against it as the wind is hitting it while we're driving and allowing some air to flow underneath the rack to give some pressure relief and apparently what that does, according to what I've read, is this creates a vacuum uh, almost. So you've got topward pressure underneath coming through, causing a suction almost, which in theory, from what I've read again, is supposed to create kind of a pressure down as we're driving as the wind hits that. Now I could have done this rack a little bit lower, um, but because I've got an air conditioning unit up there that vents upward, uh, in the 12 volt country mod air conditioning unit um, i decided to leave it at about an 11 inch rise on the q bases and on the iron ridge posts which ultimately gives me about a 13 inch rise now as it relates to the stability of this uh, bigfoot and i'm sure the other manufacturers uh, that are fiberglass trailers but they don't have a, a frame at the top they don't have trusses uh, they don't have rafters or anything, so there's nothing to screw to. Were I to put this into a standard Class A or a travel trailer that's a stick-built travel trailer, these would be screwed, the Q-bases would be screwed into, at a very minimum, two of the screws would go down through into a joist is what would happen. We don't have that option with the fiberglass trailer. Bigfoot does mount four by four, three-quarter inch squares. Uh, in there inside the fiberglass specifically for solar panel mounting but the placement of these did not work in my overall uh, setup uh, it would have put the post too far out to the edge or close to the center and it wouldn't have worked in my case so I'm stuck with going to the fiberglass now let me address this VHB thing um, I don't know if you're old as I am and if you if you remember the commercials when they were used to promote super glue when I was a kid and they'd have the guy with the helmet on with his you know hat super glued to the steel beam and he'd be hanging from it and swinging around I don't know about you but I have never in my life found super glue to be that effective um, I found it to be really ineffective in most instances as it relates to being able to adhere and keep things bonded. I have never had good luck with super glue in spite of the marketing hype. That's how I feel about VHB tape. VHB tape uh, in theory is good um, and I believe in a setup where you're just mounting a couple of small 200 watt panels like I have on the ground here on your rig with using Z brackets. I could, I could probably be convinced that that would be okay. In particular, if the surface is prepped enough, the, the VHB is, has got a solid bond there, and then there's a heavy-duty sealant that goes over the top of that. That, in essence, glues it to the roof. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But on a situation or on a, on a build like this, there is no way that I would trust VHB to bond to the fiberglass and the aluminum in such a fashion that the, the, the pressure that this rack is sure to receive 
would hold it. I just, I just don't feel comfortable with that. And were I to do an install for a customer, there's no way that I would do a rack like this on a fiberglass rig using VHB. It's still gonna be screwed through. The way we seal up things with the butyl tape and, and the sealant on the screws and the sealant over the top, it's just not gonna leak. There are, there's just no way it's gonna leak. That's my theory on that, and that's what I've done and chosen to do as it relates to this entire rack. The, the system itself is, is generating uh, 2,350 theoretical watts. These are bifacial panels. Those are 535 watt panels. There's four of them up there and a 200 watt panel. If my math is right, that's 2,350 watts. I'm regularly getting between 16 and 1700 watts. So I'm seeing a 60 to 70% efficiency. I've gone up to a 75% efficiency uh, on a really good day. So I'm seeing really, really, really good production out of this. I get plenty more than enough to power everything that I need in my rig, as well as the air conditioner, charging the battery. It's a great thing. I really like it. Now I'm in a park right now. Many of you have commented, you know, why would you want that in a park? Well, as an RV technician, I do park in parks for three or four months at a time. But then what I'll do is I'll spend two or three months off-grid totally. So I've got full power generation for all of my off-grid needs. And that's ultimately why I've done this. I really, really, really like it. I'm using the uh, Victron system. I uh, use the MultiPlus as well as all the Victron components and I've got this set up right now to prioritize wind and solar which means that the system in general will run off of solar smartly as much as humanly possible. As much as not humanly possible, as much as possible as the system kind of navigates when to expect solar. It's a very smart system. I think it's a great thing. So in closing, um, this is my solar system, 2,350 watts on a small 25-foot trailer. It is possible. Um, if you are in the market for solar, you can visit me online at robthervguy.com. It's robthervguy.com to get a full outline of what solar might cost. I know many are asking, you know, what would it cost, Rob, for you to do a system like this? A system like what I have on a rig of this size is going to run anywhere between about twelve to $15,000 panels, uh, inverter, batteries, labor included. So if I can help you, I would be more than happy to talk to you about your solar project with regard to having me install. I'll be spending the winter time in Florida for 2025 so I can do solar installs down there and well, you know, book them out. So hey, really appreciate you watching. If you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you'd like the video, hit the bell notification and the subscribe icon so you know when my next video is coming out. Always appreciate having you around. As I close out, this video is a video that YouTube thinks you want to see next. This playlist is all things RV modifications. And if you click the circle, you're subscribed. And as you know, I would love to have you on board as a subscriber. Take care. See you in the next one. Rob out.